Okay, all right. I am live and I got my mic on now, so that's good. Let's uh, just check in over at the chat. I'm going to open up Discord. Of that. So today we're going to be taking a look at a few projects. I'll probably not finish any of them, but it'll be a chance to get started on a few. And you can see from the little lower thirds here, can I point at that? Probably not. Uh, I've got a button box to work on, a NES cartridge retro pie. Talk about that in a second. And I've been poking around with this really nice old AC motor. All right, live broadcast. I'll just let Discord know I'm here. All right, like I said uh, last time, I'm terrible at multitasking, so I will try to just check the chat here at the beginning to make sure you're not telling me that my mic is broken. Okay, good, you have my mechanical keyboard clacks. That is terrific. It's very clacky. Uh, this is my cool keyboard. Oh, wait, let's hold it up here. This is the Lofree, L-O-F-R-E-E, -E, typewriter-inspired mechanical keyboard. It's not all that fast for me to type on it yet. I'm still getting used to that from, a, uh, from having been on a bunch of Apple keyboards for a long time, or normal square keys for a long time, but that's the keyboard you're hearing clack. Okay, let's... Switch on over to the bench. Okay, so I am, this is a little bit of setup here. So I'm using Wirecast to broadcast. And one of the things that Wirecast lets you do is switch between preset camera setups. So that can be switching from camera A to camera B, but it can also be switching from a setup that has camera A with a picture in picture of me or a camera that has, or a setup that has an overhead of my workshop and a screen uh, capture that's going on on a monitor. So that is actually one of the things I'm going to be working on today based on this project that uh, the Reeves brothers did. So let me switch over here for a second to... Okay, so I just clicked a thumbnail in a timeline to be able to switch to this uh, new view. One of the reasons that the Ruiz brothers built this little arcade button controller box was to enable camera switching within Wirecast when you're not standing in front of the computer. Uh, what I've been doing in the past is using a trackpad over on my workbench uh, that's a Bluetooth or a keyboard also from over there to try to switch and squint at the monitor from far away. So what I'm going to start uh, today with is building one into a cigar box. So let's uh, switch over now to the overhead and workbench, and I'll head over here. Um, maybe a little later, too, I will see how it works to have my AC running um, and close my door. A lot of my light comes from the door, so I might have to do some setup. But at least it would be nice to get feedback from people on how loud is it, picking up on this little lavalier mic, to have my AC running. So we'll do that in a little bit. Um, Okay, so to start with on this project, I'm going to um, use this cigar box. So I picked this up at the thrift store for $2.93 uh, the other day and thought that rather than doing a 3D printed enclosure or a laser cut one or make one out of wood, I would just drill holes into this cigar box and turn it into a button box. So uh, the project as the Reese Brothers did it was with four buttons. I think I'm going to do six. I've got six setups uh, right now and I could expand it I guess later but let's, uh, let's see how six works. So um, I did a test yesterday on a little piece of hardboard using a Forstner bit on my drill to make a, a hole for one of these arcade buttons. So the uh, 
bit was one and a quarter inch. It's a little bit loose. I, sh I don't have one and an eighth inch. That's what would be preferred, but it still works well enough for what we're doing here. So you can see this will um, snap into place and it's not going anywhere. It is a little loose side to side, but I'm not playing video games with this thing. I'm just going to be hitting buttons. Um, and one thing I want to check, I'm going to head over here. I just want to check that this overhead camera is focusing. I think last time I had it set to uh, manual focus at one level, so it wasn't auto-focusing. And I want to see if it auto-focuses. So uh, I'm going to take a look at that looks in focus. And now let me raise this up here. I think that's good. OK. Thank you for bearing with me as I get set up and figure this stuff out. But this thing should help. So let's now take a look at a collection of arcade buttons that we can pick from. So the project the Ruiz Brothers did, they used some of the smaller uh, lighted arcade buttons. I've got some of those here. Uh, I think what I'll use instead are these little short uh, non-threaded full-size 30 millimeter buttons and not worry about the lights. So I need six of those. Let's see, I don't know if I have six colors of those. I do have an embarrassing number of arcade buttons, but I'm kind of, I have some arcade cabinet dreams. So I've collected quite a few of these. Uh, let's see, oh, this is, that's an old two-player button. I'm not going to use that for this. Okay, here's a blue, and that's a threaded one. Okay, that looks like what I have. So we've got two green, two pink, two yellow, and a red. All right, so work with what I've got. So how about I'll just alternate between the pink, yellow, green, and I'll leave the red out of that. Um, that could be one we add later. So other thing is I've got some of these uh, pre-made wires that have uh, little terminal lugs on the end that I think we started carrying them to use with the Joy uh, Bonnet or the Arcade Bonnet, <coughs> rather, for Raspberry Pi. Uh, so they have a JST connector on the end that unfortunately I won't be using for this. Ooh, I just saw that camera go out, so let me turn that guy on and off. I wonder if that overheated. All right, the joys of my hot garage. Uh, let's. Um, Turn this guy off. And I'll try the AC now. So I'm going to click on my AC. It's actually got a fancy remote. So let me turn that on. And I'm going to step over to the chat here for a second. And you tell me, how's that sound? Uh, yeah, stuff with Kirby. I definitely have too many arcade buttons. AC too loud? Okay. Uh, then let me do some... Oh, someone's saying not bad, but I'm still audible. Yeah, let me turn the camera back on and see if it can survive. I'm going to unplug. It goes through a little HDMI conversion box. Actually, that thing is pretty hot. I wonder if I could put a heat sink or a fan on the little converter box. Let's see. Oops. Uh, all right. Hey. Is it back? Oh, yeah. Zoom that in. 
All right, we'll see how long that lasts before needing maintenance. Uh, yeah, I don't have a way to cool it really easily right now. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to do the uh, cables I was saying. I don't have interconnects for this. Uh, what I am using is the Feather M0 Express. So this is a little script in Python that's running on this uh, in real time. And it's just set so that when you jumper uh, pins, I think 12, 11, 10, 9, 6. Oh, there goes the camera again. All right. I'll switch to this overhead that's big. And I'm going to change this one to my little FaceTime camera. Do I have another camera? I actually have one more camera I can plug in that I just set here. All right, let's try that. This is a little USB camera. It's my nice fancy uh, Sony Micro Four Thirds camera that's having this problem, but I actually I think it's the HDMI conversion box. So here we go with I'll add a camera source of what are you called USB camera two. It's thinking about it. Set the camera layer nope that's not going to work okay so I'll just switch this one to be the FaceTime and unplug that one the other issue it could be I have too many things on one USB bus in case you were curious about the theories. Yeah, that's not working. Okay, so I'm going to add one more FaceTime camera and I'll put this in the corner. Oh, is that not going live? Oh, that's interesting. I'm going to switch over to check out the YouTube feed. Are you getting that? Oh, we're on delay, so that's hard to put ice cubes in a Ziploc. That's a good idea. Let's see. I've got actually a little digital thermometer here. Yeah, the little HDMI box is 116 degrees on the outside right now. That's probably had a chance to cool off. I thought I had a pure overhead view, but oh good, that's got me in it now. All right, let's hide cam main and let me noodle with the scale and position. Actually, let's bring the scale up and crop in because I'll be standing back there. All right, that switched to. OK, so with that running, let me show you the demonstration of jumpering. Uh, I've already got the software running on this board, and I have a USB running to my computer. So this Feather uh, M0 Express is going to act like an HID device, like a USB keyboard, essentially, uh, which is a theme I've got going, considering the pinball one on the Teensy last time. So what I'm going to do is just take a little jumper wire and ground um, to change over. So there it has just switched and switched again and so on. So that part's done. That's like the should be the exciting reveal, right? But that, that part's pretty simple. So I think it won't take too much time now for us to go ahead and build uh, the buttons into the box and mount it. So let's see how we can take, uh, take that project home pretty quickly. So I'm going to do, let me pop this button out, some, something like that. And then, do I have enough of these wires? I do. 
Okay, so I'm going to trim these things off, and I'll also need to bend these out, uh, or these little terminals out a little bit so that they fit the depth of the box. If you look here, they'll sit probably about there. Um, so it's close, but I think it's going to, yeah, it's going to bump into the bottom of the box. So I'm going to need to bend those out a little bit. Hopefully I don't break them. Uh, I'll be gentle. Uh, if I do, then I'll solder wire directly to them. Okay, so let me get a square. Whoop, I'm gonna trip to my death over lighting here. This is a pretty cool, can you see this thing? Yeah, this, this uh, stand, you can barely see it. This is a really nice old lighting stand that came out of, uh, I think the KABC, um, no, CBS, CBS Electric Department. I got it from a picker guy, I know. It is a beast. I have mashed my fingers in it, forgetting that when you loosen these, the poles come slamming down. Okay, so uh, this is um, unnecessarily complex square, but let's go to 90 degrees. Just to get a straight line across here. And let's see, I think I'll have them up towards the top. That seems kind of neat. And uh, let's see if this will be long enough. Do I have a proper? Let's see if this will work. Yes. OK, that should work. Let me grab a pencil. And let's mark this. And how about I'm just going to, rather than do math, see if something convenient like every inch and a half works. I think that does. So inch and a half spacing, let's start the first one here. You can see I'm lousy at doing this with a ruler in real life because I so often do this sort of stuff in, in a CAD program. I use Rhino a lot or Maya. Lay it out and laser cut it or whatever, and so it's really easy to do measurements without to use rulers and things. All right, so what did I say? On um, every inch and a half. Please discuss among yourselves the better ways I could be doing this. I don't mind. Okay, and now the Forstner bit. I love these. Uh, they have a little evil point that sets the bit in the center of where your hole is going to be. And then instead of a very steep angle like a regular uh, drill bit that tears, especially on this kind of little cedar boxes, uh, this very gradually makes your hole uh, with, with sort of a chiseled end. So let's see. Now, to avoid tear out, it's a good idea to set something under it. So let me get a piece of scrap wood and uh, flip that. So let's see if this two by four ought to work. these cameras are hanging on. The other one, not so much. OK. And with this, you've got a nice little fine point that you can just set in there. Um, 
Otherwise, sometimes I like to take an awl or an ice pick or something pointy and make a little divot so that a drill bit won't dance around. But these things don't dance around. These things get in there. Uh, I'm going to put on some safety glasses because I like to set a good example. And I like to keep my eyeballs. yet? No. Keep going. Oh, I'm through and going into the 2x4 and I didn't have that chucked in very tight. There we go. All right, I'm just going to set that there. So now you see we have a very lovely hole for an arcade button. Let's just proceed with the other holes. I can't time lapse this because this is live. I wonder if I should have, yeah, I probably I'm never going to be happy with this bad spacing. Let me see if I can, I'm just going to cheat these out a little bit. Let's do, ah, forget it. This is quick and dirty. I will live with it. Ooh, those look a little, I hope I didn't make a mistake here. Let's see if, oh yeah, there's enough space. Okay, I was worried that the overhang or the little bezel on these would bump into each other, but it's good. Okay, next one. Yeah, that's quite a difference in spacing. I did a terrible job of measuring that. Maybe it'll look artfully um, exotic. That's a nice little curl of wood there. It smells nice and cedary. And last one. All right. That looks good. Let's clean this up a little bit. My trash is completely full. Let me get a cardboard box to sweep that into. Go in here.
Okay. Next, let's pop these in. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to take a look over at uh, the chat for a second to make sure people aren't telling me something about bandwidth going crazy or CPU burning up. Because I don't know if we have any Adafruit people in the chat. <laughs> John, I know if no one was watching, I definitely would have just swept that on the ground. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, stuff with Kirby, I do try to be pretty organized in the shop. I'm not a super organized person by nature, but boy, it slows me down when I have to spin around in circles looking for things all the time. So I have gotten a certain level of, uh, yes, stuff. The drill press would definitely have been better, uh, especially if you're doing holes with any kind of depth, because you never come in at angles straight when you're doing it um, by eye with a hand drill. So if it's something where you need a straight hole and not uh, you know, the, the sort of hole coming in at an angle, drill press is much better. Uh, I think this was a little easier for me to film, though. But I'd one day, I will have the uh, camera thing under control, and I'll have one over there at the drill press. OK, so it seems like things are working. Let's go ahead and finish popping buttons through. So how about, oh, what about something like this, pink, pink? Yellow, yellow, green, green. I like that. All right, this one's not coming out very easily. So there's like a little barb, I think, on these. Sometimes, yeah, this has like a little little bump on it that catches into the hole on the end of the lug. So. Uh, I will go ahead and bend this out like that and see if that is enough to clear. Yes, it closes. Okay, so let's do that for the rest of them. And it would be nice to color code stuff and, oh, let's see, you know what? Hmm. I really would like to just run the grounds from button to button to button so that I'm not trying to run a ton of uh, ground wires into the feather. But since these are easy and they're here, I'll probably cut all the ground ones and solder them to each other and then have one longer piece of wire going into the board, kind of like I did on the pinball controller. Uh, it should work well enough. But in case you, I haven't actually built a main cabinet before. Uh, I've done a little bit of some similar work doing using buttons. And But one thing I've noticed watching people who do arcade cabinets is they always do a nice little short daisy chain of grounds across uh, every button so that they're not running longer runs of wire that aren't necessary. Less wiring to deal with the better, usually. OK. So now I will let's see that. By the way, scar boxes always have a little evil nail that you poke yourself on over and over and over again. That's what keeps it uh, sort of closed pops into the end of that front lip. I'll leave it there and just continue to suffer for my art. Oh man, I've gotten used in just like three days, I've gotten used to having that air conditioning. So now I'm starting to sweat. Sorry about that. All right, let's see if this closes. Yeah, it kind of wants to pop open a little bit, but I'll probably flip that nail out and uh, secure it in there once it's all ready. All right, so there's my uneven buttons. But if I put it at a cool angle, you can hardly tell, right? Uh, OK, so for wiring, let's 
get some, these are my favorite little cutters. What's this brand? Ez Ezram? Aram. Aram. I love these. I like the squishy handles. Okay, so I'll have, I'm going to save. So you just want to check when you're doing this, where is the controller going to sit? And when you open it, are you going to yank the wires out? So, and I'm going to pull them all. You're going to kind of worry about your farthest runs of wire. So those end ones, those green ones. If the controller is sitting there, that'll work. Is that going to hit the controller? Yeah, I'll put it right up against the wall right back there. Um, I think also I'm going to put, I love these little panel mount USBs. Uh, I was going to use one on the pinball controller one, and I think I used it on one but not the other. Uh, I'll use this because then it gives you a nice little way to plug and unplug when you're moving it around rather than having a permanent USB coming out. Uh, okay, so th what that tells me is I shouldn't really try to preserve much of the length of these because I, I need the whole wire. So, um, sorry. I cringe sometimes when I decapitate these. Do you too? Sounds a little bit like uh, trimming fingernails. That's gross. Sorry, little buddies. All right, so let's split these off into the grounds and the inputs to the board. And I will consider these the ground. And oh, so for the board, uh, we have some options. We could solder directly to it, like I did with the pinball controller. Let me move this up close. Uh, or I could put this into a uh, perma proto board or a breadboard, or I could use the um, screw shield. Uh, what do we call ours? The, the perma proto screw terminal feather wing guy. Uh, I think, again, just uh, for expediency and simplicity and lowest cost possible, I will just solder directly to that. So let me strip these guys, solder them together, and then I'll leave a little extra length on one for uh, the solder to the board. Let's see, if I'm twisting these together, I need, so I don't know if you use these kinds. I was avoiding them last time because I was using really thin wire, but you can change this little stop so that you can adjust how much length you get when you tug the, cut and tug the little wire off. These things are great. I saw that Noah and Pedro now have a new wire stripper. I think Noah does, that is that uh, two sort of mouths that bite and yank across the razor. I've never had a set of those. Okay, so let's make this middle-ish, one of these center one's the longer wire, and I will tin the end of that one. Let me get a magnetic hand thingy. So I have a steel workbench with this wood uh, butcher block on top, so that's convenient because being able to stick magnetic stuff, I have a lot of magnetic stuff stuck to the bench here to help me out. Even, I don't know if I've shown this before, I've got a couple of these sort of donut magnets. Oh, why don't I show them here? Got a couple of these little donut magnets threaded through my solder. Uh, so, I, so the solder isn't always like falling down on the ground. I have a spool over here, but I get to just pull this through these, these uh, donuts. Oh, look, I just broke the solder. Good, good demo, John. Okay, so here's a piece of solder. Let's tin that guy. Soldering iron needs to be closer without yanking cameras out. Of. Oh, not enough hands. Hold on. This is where I burn myself. You come here. You come here. 
did it. Okay. So I will only tin the tip of this um, because I find it difficult to twist wires together and have a bunch to twist together when they're tinned. So hey, get over here. Gravity not helping. Okay, so that's that center one. And now I'll twist all these others to the base of it. Let's try to do it all in one bundle. And I'll probably put a nice big fat heat, uh, heat shrink tube around that just to avoid calamity since quarters are cramped in here. All right. Okay. Stay there. Okay, lots of solder time. Take a while to heat up. Okay, I think we have... Yes, it's saturated. Excellent. We can do... I should do it. I'm going to put a piece of heat shrink tube right about there. And that still gives me a little of this uh, poking out to be able to. Oh, you know what? I can lower this camera for a second. Let me do that. Watch out. How's that? I know it's at a little bit of an angle, but that's at least better. Uh, sorry for the white background under here. That's probably difficult to see under. Let me get a little piece of felt. There we go. All right. Time for... Shrinking of... I leave this at a fairly low temperature, this is like 180 um, centigrade because I don't like to reheat the solder under the heat shrink and I use this for this uh, almost more than anything else. All right, I'll keep it in place. Next, let's, uh, I think I'll probably solder that to the board last, and maybe I'll bring that up from the bottom like this, and then bring all of the input pins from the top. That's, that's going to be the plan. Okay. So now, uh, I can, I think I'm just going to strip and solder these uh, in sequence. I'm not going to mark them. So this is my Oh, I don't need to take that much off, do I? And I won't bother tinning these. Let's just do it. Too much preparation. Not enough action. Okay, I'm in five for that one. I'll just solder as I go. I just... This is one danger of having magnets. They like to pick up the other magnets. Stay. Okay. 
just like that, a little hook. Now everything is hidden under this felt. Where is my, there we go. Trim that. Okay, so right button is five. Next button will be, what pin is that? Six that's available, I think. Yeah, then nine after that. I should probably test one of these before soldering it all. Nah, just do it. Maybe uh, since I'm doing projects related to making my live stream setup, maybe I'll use a uh, build a Peltier cooler for my HDMI conversion box next time. That would be cool. So I'm also going to, besides my air conditioner, my other two plans associated with making this less hot are going to be uh, some insulation. I have none right now. So a little radiant barrier and foam insulation on the roof, as well as cooler tiles. I think, what do they call them? Cool max tiles, cool, cool roof tiles in a light gray. And I'm going to get a big, I'm going to put up a big ceiling fan. I need to clear out some overhead stuff, but uh, I need to move this air around. We could probably have a whole show about just making the workshop work better. I don't know how many of you guys know Gareth Branwin, a friend of mine who's awesome writer and uh, author, journalist, cyberpunk. He's part machine. He has a metal hip. Uh, and he's writing a book on workshop tips. So if you have any, let me know and I'll put you in touch with Gareth because everyone has cool stories about techniques and tools and things that were passed down to them by relatives and teachers they've had. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the sort of diversity of info that people will be able to provide. I gave him, I was writing up some for Gareth. And one of the ones that I have started doing more and more over the last few years is putting everything in the workshop that I can up on casters. This bench is not, but the one to the side is. My, my main um, standing desk I built for my computer workstation is on some nice big locking casters. I just got a little uh, tool cart for with, drawer, with a drawer for uh, a little CNC mill. I built a little platform for that with casters and it Unless you have tons and tons of workshop space, in which case, don't bother. But for me, it really helps to be able to rearrange stuff and move things out of the way and pull stuff around. Get over here, solder. Oh, that's good. So in other news, I was uh, fooled by Walmart into placing a pre-order for an SS NES Classic the other day. I was one of the lucky people who managed to pre-order it for the 25 minutes or so that it was live. And then yesterday I got the email from them saying, sorry, we didn't really want to sell you that. 
we're not allowed to yet. I'm guessing they got in trouble with Walmart or something and claimed it was a technical glitch. So in protest, my daughter and I played some Super Bomberman on SNES RetroPie, and I felt better. I also have uh, a controller to recommend, which is the 8-Bit Do. It's spelled the number 8, B-I-T-D-O. It's the brand 8-Bit Do, or Do. Uh, they have an SNES-style controller. I think it's the SNES Pro, and it looks just like a... SNES controller, it's got Bluetooth, so you can pair it to all kinds of things. I've paired it to my iPad when I was traveling recently. Uh, but I just have it straight plugged into the RetroPie, and it feels so good. Uh, it's got nice, compared to I was using an Xbox 360 controller, and that was a little mushy on the D-pad. Okay, so that is, oh, time for ground. Boy, I hope this works. Let's get this bent around a little bit. Like that. It looks sort of neat. Display of wires there, not terrible. All right. That should do it. So, to test it out, let me get rid of all these little... Here, this is for you guys. I'm just going to sweep this onto the floor with my hand, like a real person, not a machine. Okay. Do you feel better now that I did that? I hope so. Uh, okay, so I'll have to do the mount, but let's, let's test this out. Here we go. I'm going to Plug it in. We have power. We have that NeoPixel on there going green. By the way, that's something I love about the M0 Express Feather is this built-in... Um, oh, why is it blinking red? This built-in NeoPixel. Okay, so let's test this out. Yeah! Woo! That's awesome! God, it's so satisfying. Have you noticed the theme here? This is... Uh, the second time now with the pinball controller. In fact, all my live streams are about making physical buttons on things that are otherwise clicky with mice and touchy with touch screens. Maybe that'll be my, my ongoing theme or recurring theme. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. And maybe putting that out there, maybe that's smarter about there. Is that right? No, that's going to be right under the board. Okay, so it's going to live back here and hide. Okay, so let's make a uh, hole for this. This, there's not a super neat way to do it. I will uh, probably use like an X-Acto knife and a chisel. So uh, again, I probably could have done this before <laughs> doing everything else, but oh well. So uh, where should the wire come out? How about the back right corner here? That would be kind of a nice place for it. Um, Okay, so let me, yeah, I'm just going to mark, I did a laser cut one, where's that thing, can I reuse, I laser cut a nice hole for this when I did the, this thing, um, this mystery box project I did. Yeah, that's the perfect everything, spacing and so on for the two screws and uh, allowing most USB cables to plug in. Let's see if this one fits. Yeah, so that's a good hole. So I think I have a spare one of these. I think I'm going to get that and see if I can just trace that. I'll need like a long skinny tool. I'll probably, yeah, I have an idea. Okay, so let's get... Uh, I'm going to go find the spare version of that. Okay, first let me check, check in on chat. How's it going, chat? Now let's switch cameras just so that it looks like things are happening. And... 
Yeah, Kirby, that'd be awesome to laser in some description. Sorry, I'm going to be late to catching up on the chat here. Uh, whoa. Heat shrink tubing to repair the protective coating on your charging cables. That is a great tip, Chicken Z Gaming. Bread bag. Oh, these are good. Okay, yeah, I'll. I'll um, I don't think this chat is persistent, so I'm actually, if you'll, if you'll uh, humor me for a second, I'm going to open up a note and copy and paste your tips for Gareth. Uh, you know what? I'll tell you this. If you've got a tip, because uh, I'd like to credit you and I don't want to spend the time doing this now, uh, please email me, jp at jpixl, that's jpixel but I couldn't afford the E, jp at jpixel.net. Uh, please do it, Chicken Z Gaming and John Schaffstall and anyone else. Uh, someone asked about the main camera. We want to see if that's working, and I don't trust it. But yeah. uh, main cam. I can switch between just this FaceTime camera and this one. Press the red button. Picture again. Bingo, there we go. Oh, I wonder, see, I wonder if my CPU is heating up. It's at, uh, system CPU is at 88, so I hope this is working for y'all. Okay, what was I going to do? Let me look for um, if I have that. Oh, yeah, it's not e easily accessible now, so forget it. This, this project is about doing it quick and dirty and old fashioned, so no laser cut templates for me. Let's, uh, I was about to go to the computer to switch to a different camera, but I can use this now. <laughs> Wait for it to boot. Oh, I can't see the, does this trackpad work? No, let me switch. I can't actually see my preview, so I don't know what I've switched to. Sorry about that. All right. There we go. Um, okay, so let's put the USB cable in place. You are witnessing my live thought process, so quick and dirty version of this will just be from there to there. Height of there to there. And let's get a chisel and an exacto. So chisel and my exacto is hiding behind this drawer. Just use a knife. And I won't even bother with the straight edge. Let's just do this like this. This is soft wood, which you can kind of convinced to do anything you want just by going over it a few times with a blade. Very rough eyeball. I like things like these buttons where they actually hide the hole because they have a little bezel. Not the case for this USB panel mount. So it kind of covers the sides but not the top. And I might need to fix that with a file because it's not a straight line. It's dipping in a little bit. Whoop, that was bound to happen. Okay, let's see if we can. So never leave your hand in the jamming path of your chisel. mostly to try to get a straight edge down from the wall. It's a good idea when doing this to clamp your work piece and use two hands, but again, to do it for this camera, I'm going to do it a not so perfect way.
You know what? I will get an exacto now because that'll be perfect to break through to the other side on this. So my camera's going to wobble. And I'll move it back. Please don't get seasick. There we go. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. Okay, so here's what I mean. You can. Once you've got a straight line to butt up against, you can, I guess you can see a little better. Score it a little bit and then rock. And you can pry a straight line. You can see from the inside. Oh look, here's this piece of paper. So there's the blade coming through. This is by no means me saying this is the right way to do pretty much anything. That's just how I figure out how to do something. Okay, two sides, and let's connect the dots. Let's see if I can do it from the inside or not. Nope, that's not getting in there. I'm gonna set. I'm trying to find a good way to hold it so you can see and not kill myself in the process. We get a wrench. There you go. Pliers. I don't know if this was the sharpest exacto in my shop either, but it's probably a bit duller now. Left to this one. Okay, this is going to be like the longest part of the project was just making this hole. Woo! We have a square. Let's see if it's the right size square. And then I'll make a couple holes to drill these into. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I think, I can't remember if these are these screws that don't come out of here. If they don't, then I'll just put the holes in, eyeballing it. I'll get a screwdriver. They come out. Yay. And I'm going to grab a safety pin, which is one of my tips that I gave Gareth. It's one of the most useful things, not the most useful things. It's a very useful thing to have in the shop because it's almost like a pocket knife in that it 
kind of folds itself. You can just clip them to somewhat consistent places so that you find them. Uh, but they're really good when you need just a little jabby, pokey thing. Yeah, and as I remember, these holes are really close to the edge. Luckily, this thing's pretty bendy rubber, so it's hard to make a hole big enough for the screw without just going into the inside of the cutout. Okay, and pull this through. I'll show you a tool I like to use for these things is a little hand drill or a Yankee twist drill, they call them. You hold the end, actually this one you just place on the work. I have a couple different styles. You place it on the work and as you push down it twists this little bit and it stores a few different sizes of uh, these little reamers. And that is a lot easier in small work than a actual hand drill, I find. Whether electric or crank style, they're not so easy to get in there with two hands. You can see I was able to do that one-handed. Okay, I probably tore out a bunch on this side, but I don't think I care too much. There's a couple little holes, and now to make them bigger, uh, I can Let's see if that'll do it. I don't think that's big enough for those screws, so I'll go up to a bigger bit size. That's a too big. Where's my screws? Oh, you can actually check. This is kind of cool. In the uh, side of the, I'll, I'll go air on a little bit small, but if your screw fits into there, that's the diameter of the bit, provided you've put them back in the right place. I've never verified if those are actually in the right place, but I think they are, because I haven't had too many problems with that. All right. So new bit goes in, or reamer, and this is delicate stuff. It may, it actually, I'll try, yeah, this is what happens. You start going into the square there, like I said. All right, so maybe that one will be good. I think the other one's going to flop around a little bit. Okay, this one's going to, yeah, I ruined that one, but that's okay, that'll be enough to hold this. See this Kirby, this is one of the things, oops, <laughs> one of the things I was saying that uh, helps me pretend to be organized, which is really try hard to put stuff away pretty soon after I use it, otherwise I end up with a pile of tools everywhere and I give up. For example, I'm done with the chisel. Let's put that back. I hope I don't sound like your mom or something saying that. Clean up your shop. Okie doke. Screw these back in. As you can see, it kind of hides the sins of the side of the thing. Um, you can see the top and the bottom of it. There we go. So let's plug that in the feather. It's a good thing that's long enough because I didn't really test it. I just lucked out. So I think we'll want that to tuck maybe up along there. 
set that in first. For now, I'm just going to close it. I don't think I'll worry about how I'm... Oh, I've got to artfully avoid the USB cable with some of these wires. This one got unbent a little. Come here. Or did I never bend that one? I don't know how that was closing. All right. Okay, so here's this little... I'm being cocky by trying to close it before I test it. But let's see if I can get that nail, tap that nail in a little bit. This is an old hammer I picked up at a yard sale or an estate sale uh, where this guy used some bailing wire to repair it. Uh, nice old ball peen hammer. There, that's closed. Oh, I came out the front a little bit. I'm going to hurt myself on that. I'll file that down later. Okay, and here's the test. Plugged in. Oh, got a power up. Are you booted? Yes! It works! I don't have a red one, I got the pink ones. Boom, 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 boom. All right. So that's that. Uh, what time do we have? It is 1.40. I said I was going to end at 2. So uh, I was, I'll just tease a couple of the projects that I was going to do. Let me switch. I'm going to see if I can turn on the main cam for a second just for doing some wrap up. Let's see. It's on. And let's unplug and replug the device. Yeah. Okay, so these are a couple teases on, uh, let me show, do a little show and tell on a thing and a little tease on something. So uh, I'll move my button box over here for a second. I guess I'll need that close at hand, huh? Oh, did that not, sorry, it looks like that didn't switch over properly. There we go. Um, See, I like the button box already. It's the best. So, gaffer's tape, why are you here? Few things. So, I've got, look at that, more cleaning. A NES cartridge project I'm going to do. So, old NES, actually that's a brand new shell you can buy. I wanted one to practice some ideas on. Here's an old one. So, you can buy... Sometimes if you either go to yard sale or just have some around, that's awesome. I got this one on eBay for, I think it was $2 or something like this. It's terrible. Hoops basketball game, I'm presuming it's terrible. Um, and so what I want to do is remove the original cartridge um, and put a Raspberry Pi Zero with the Joy Bonnet in it and on it. So Raspberry Pi Zero will go inside somewhere, some uh, there's enough ports to plug into power in the TV actually, yeah. So it'll probably go right there so that I can plug wires out to the power and TV. And then case will go on top and this will go like so. So it gives you like a nice grip to hold on to and uh, the buttons and joystick and extra controls that you need to do a RetroPie. So this will have a RetroPie running on there. And this will be a little unplug it, take it with you, plug it somewhere. Fun little NES. So that'll maybe that'll be my next live stream, but I just wanted to, to give you a heads up on that and tease that now. Um, and if you have any advice or tips on that, or if you've messed with anything related, please send me a note. So that is an upcoming project. And then we have a few minutes. So last thing I wanted to show, actually I'll, I'll do a little bit of a 
updates to this. So this is this beautiful Bodine Motors, the, the company out of Chicago, I think they were, or maybe they're out of Illinois, I can't remember. Uh, it was pulled from a piece of medical equipment by a friend of mine. I can't remember what the thing was. I don't know if it was like a stir plate for chemistry or what the heck it was, but it needed a really slow, uh, fairly torquey, uh, low RPM motor. So this thing uh, is, that's why it says EH Sargent on here. That's the brand of the medical equipment and Bodine is the, the people who actually made this beautiful little AC motor. So uh, I pulled this apart. It wasn't running, it was just stuck. So I pulled it apart yesterday and cleaned it up a bit, including the gearbox, which had um, just tar-like grease. The grease had, had clumped up and was no longer able to move. So I degreased that a bit and I just put in some white lithium grease just to make it go. But my friend Jason and my friend Coop both said to use like um, Redline CV uh, grease, the kind of stuff you put in like packing bearings on a car. So I'm going to get that in and I'll do that uh, to make this guy run. But for now, let's, um, all I want to do is actually, I have a very temporary splice here of some wire. So what I want to do is put a better wire on here and an on off switch. How about, um, so where'd that switch go? I have a really cool, okay. Got this cool little Bakelite on off switch at a estate sale or something many years ago. I've never used it for anything. So what I was thinking is mounting the motor uh, and this motor I may use for a, uh, an escape room uh, mystery box kind of project as the payoff. So it's got to move something. Um, this thing's filthy. Let me clean this off. So I'm just going to, for now, it may change, but I'm going to mount it to that, this little piece of wood here, or MDF, so that it's a little easier to deal with and a little safer with better wiring. Okay, so I think what I'll do is mount that like so. And one cool thing about this gearbox is that it can come off and be screwed back on in any of 12 angles. There's uh, 12 holes, so you've got this three, pole, three hole pattern of the screws, so you can reposition this thing and so you can point the, uh, this right angle axis uh, axle anywhere you want along that plane. And so yeah, I was thinking, little on off switch be over here so that if I end up rotating this to the right we have some clearance for the switch or maybe just off to the side no I like it over here that's fun okay so what I'll do is I'll need a couple of wood screws I'll use to put that in I don't have an exciting wood screw camera to bring you over here Sorry. These might do. And here's a screwdriver. And I'll get an awl so that I can start that hole off in style. Ooh, it's hot. All right. Did this thing move? I thought I had this a lot lower. Let's bring it back down. Ooh, it did a bunch of color correction for you. Okay. Sorry, rotating. There we go. Where'd my hammer go? Did I put it away? See, now that's the downside, Kirby. I don't just have a hammer sitting right there because I thought I was done with it. I'll grab a different one. I'll drill that a little bit, actually. Oh, 
Consider that reamed. Got the reamer on that got hot. MDF is unforgiving stuff. All right, so there's a wood screw of seemingly appropriate length. Sorry, I bumped the camera. I'm going to be gentle with the Bakelite. Sorry about the camera again. Oh, that's the issue. Let me switch cameras. There we go. You know how I did that with my new button box? Very excited. Okay, that looks straight. Reamer. Can you see that? Yeah. Move over just a little so I don't hit the camera. I'm going to do a non straight hole as I try to avoid the camera. Okay. All right, this is coming over to the side. Sorry. There we go. These are one inch number six wood screws for anyone who was interested to know. Have I missed the hole? Doesn't seem right. No, that hole's totally in the wrong place. Straight up and down? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to put the hole in it while it's on if I can. Does that work? Yeah. Okay, now I, uh, do I know where my wire nuts are? There's some in here. I grabbed two. I have them kind of buried away somewhere. I grabbed two, and I really should have grabbed four. So I will leave those as is. There's a connection here that comes off of the motor that I just twisted and put some electrical tape on. Um, and yeah, you know what, for now, I was going to switch over to this proper wire. Uh, but na for now, just to make this work right now, I will splice this back onto the end uh, and run one wire through this switch. So I can wire nut this. Again, it's kind of temporary because I don't know exactly how I'm going to use this. Uh, but I wouldn't leave this out for toddlers to play with in this condition either. This lamp wire, by the way, is from a company, uh, I think it's in Massachusetts, somewhere on the East Coast, called Sunshine Electric, Sunrise Electric, something like that. And they make very cool cloth-covered wire for people who rewire lamps, mostly. Lots of neat patterns. I got some of this uh, smaller gauge stuff, but I think it's, what is it, 20? Two? 24? Might be. Uh, seems to not overheat with this. Okay, so now I'll run... Will that reach? No, that would have been nice, huh? Oh, well, because I didn't put this down yet. Okay, so let's just run. This will be easier. I'm going to undo this tape. 
and run one lead of the motor to my switch and the wire to the other side of the switch. Okay. So that yeah so here's the uh, wire leads where are these gonna come up through they were supposed to come up through those holes weren't they does that have enough space no ah darn okay I won't be able to put the cover on either but for today I'm just gonna leave that super dangerously open and I need a short screwdriver whoa that's the biggest bit for that Yeah, I imagine this, I don't know exactly what this was for. I'm sure it was just like a hardware store item back in the 60s, 50s. It's Bakelite. Uh, and if you were using this on a wall, you'd need to run the wires straight through the back of the thing. So I don't know if it was for that. It doesn't really look like a light switch. Pry up. Doesn't say much on it, but I just love that deco style. Couldn't be that old. I don't think it's from the 30s. All right, this guy here. I always find you need a lot of wire when you're wrapping them around these uh, lamp or uh, light switch screws. That might be too much, but I'll trim off a little excess. This is not the highest tech thing you will ever see on the Adafruit channel, I grant you that. The guy wiring up an AC motor. Okay, that all seems good and somewhat safe. Let me raise this camera up so you can see the motor in its entirety. And I'll just take this tape I had and wrap it around there so you can see the shaft turning. Off. Let's plug this in. All right. There we go. Nice little four RPM motor action. Switching cameras. So that's all we've got time for. Well, we have three minutes left, so I'm gonna come over and just check out the chat, and uh, I'm gonna use my button box to get us there as I walk on over. See, do I have another view? No, that's the one. Oh, I can go to this. Okay, you can watch that turn while we talk. Deal? It's a deal. No blue smoke, yes, yeah, so that's good. Cook to the, uh, oh yeah, speed control. True Tech, I would love to do speed control. This one's non-reversing, so I don't think you could go back and forth um, with it, which was one of my ideas at first, is to use it to drive. Uh, I, I, board out a little sprocket uh, timer pulley, rather. This little timer pulley yesterday so that it would fit um, on the end of that shaft. And I have some timing belt I can turn stuff with, which is kind of cool, but if you're not with a DC motor and a motor controller, it's a little tricky uh, to be able to move stuff because you can only go one way. Um, All right, let me go backwards in the chat. I'm going to go backwards in time. So yeah, this is, uh, I, let me go all the way back to where I can not answer questions I'm only seeing half of. Chicken Z Gaming, thank you for sending uh, the tips. Uh, my, I'm going to type this in the chat. Send, oh, send tips for Gareth. Brand wins. Make book to me at JP. I'll try to not type and narrate what I'm typing too much. Sorry about that. 
John, thank you. Uh, square holes are a drag. I appreciate the compliment on the chisel work. Uh, it's definitely hacking. Looks so bookcase hack. I don't know what that means, Yanni. Chicken Z, thank you for sending. MC Time, thank you. I did not cut myself. Woo! We did make a square. Oh, uh, John, are you talking about carpet tape for... Oh, that's one of your tips. Okay, excellent. Cool. All those tools and I grab a knife. It's true, Nick. Chicken Z, I'm sorry you ec electrocuted yourself with your camera. It was probably the flash, right? Giant capacitor on an old camera flash that zaps the heck out of you. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. Hose buttons made the screen go off a few times. What does that mean? Did I bump the buttons while I was talking? I don't know what that means. Micro USB extender should go on the inside. Yeah, oh, Bruno, okay, I see what you're saying. So, this is a big protruding, um, not super attractive thing here. So, you can put it on the inside and the screws on the outside. That's a good idea. I think I was, um, since I wanted to try to hide some of the ugly cutting I did, I was thinking about it as being external and I've used it that way several times now but I think you're absolutely right in fact yeah that is how I did it on that box uh, the, the Russian um, mystery box so thanks for reminding me maybe I can switch that around we'll see if that looks better let's see any other questions Uh, sent it to John J. Park at Adafruit Industries. Oh, I'm JP at Adafruit Industries. I don't use that one, though. You know, if you just send it to JP at jpixel.net, I actually am not at the other end of the email address that you just mentioned, Chicken Z. Um, or you can, you can hunt down um, Gareth. So, yeah, uh, Jan Bridges, you were asking, what, what do you do with an AC motor that only runs at 4 RPM? It's pretty torquey. Um, so, originally, it was like moving a big stir plate or something like that for a piece of medical or chemistry equipment. Um, I was thinking about using it for moving, either sliding a drawer out uh, in an escape room box or raising a pedestal. Um, I may use a linear actuator now for that. So, this one you can, but definitely with like timing belt attached to it and something clipped on it, you can slide pretty, pretty uh, heavy or high friction stuff because it's really, really torquey. It's hard to stop. You can barely uh, seize it up with your hand. Uh, True Tech, you have a hoarder's paradise of electric motors. I am jealous. I don't have that many of them. All right. Well, I think we are just at the mark. So I want to thank you all very much for tuning in and I will see you next time. Uh, hopefully to take on the NES cartridge retro pie. Goodbye, everybody.